Hey, welcome. And in this video, we're just going to have a look at how you can use the new ChatGPT desktop application for Macintosh. If you don't have a Macintosh, eventually OpenAI will be rolling out a Windows one, but for now, the desktop application is only available on Mac OS. If you want to access it, go to the top right, click on your icon, and click on Download the Mac app. After downloading the Mac installer, run the installation and then load ChatGPT desktop. All right, so now that ChatGPT desktop is open, there's a couple of different things that I'd like to point out here. You've got still got your chat history on the left hand you can see here. If you go down to the bottom left and you click on settings, a settings panel will load and you can optimize and improve the experience. So for example, you can say whether you want to use for chat training, you can also do things like customize your ChatGPT so you can add on custom instructions. Um, so that can be quite nice. And you can also turn on or off different types of GPT-4 capabilities. So you can see we've got browsing, DALI, and code. So these are the types of things you can uh, optimize in the settings. The other thing that's good to know is there's a keyboard shortcut for the desktop launcher. So this is useful for when you're creating, when you're wanting to launch it. And also you can choose a different voice. So you can choose between Ember, Juniper, Breeze or Cove at the moment. I personally really like Juniper's voice. And this is one of the benefits of using ChatGPT on desktop is you can do voice conversation. If you look at the bottom, we can click on the headphones and then ChatGPT will enter a voice communication. And we can talk to ChatGPT in real time. And so now ChatGPT, you're just being talked about on a course. So how does that make you feel ChatGPT? I'm glad to hear that prompt engineering courses are becoming more popular. It's an important skill for getting the most out of AI. What kind of things are they covering in the course? Oh, well, we're covering quite a lot. And so thanks for having that chat with us, ChatGPT. Questions or need any help with the material? Feel free to ask. So when you're finished with ChatGPT, if you look in the top, you can click on the pause. And then after that, then you can also cancel it as well. So. The way I like to do it is I like to pause it in the top and then I like to go to the top left and then you'll now see that you've got a voice chat that's just ended. And what's interesting about this is basically you have your voice chat here and you can see all the messages that we were talking about with ChatGPT. One thing that you can do as well um, is you can have a voice conversation with ChatGPT, but then in a separate window on the browser, you can have a different ChatGPT session going. And this can be quite useful. So for example, we can have one window where we're using ChatGPT and we're using it to do text, another where we're just using ChatGPT to keep us company or to bounce ideas off immediately. So that can be quite useful. So for example, we can you know, spin up a chat session here uh, and at the same time say, uh, we're currently learning about prompt engineering. Sure, let's get into it. We're currently learning about prompt engineering. What specific aspects of prompt engineering are you focusing on right now? So I'm just going to pause ChatGPT and then what I want you to see is if I refresh this browser, you'll see ChatGPT has given us some information on the text. But if I rephrase this browser, refresh this browser, you'll see that we've also got prompt engineering basics as well. And so when we end this chat session, this will also appear up as a separate one. So what you'll see is the voice chat ended uh, and then you've got this one here. So there, this is this exciting one here. And this is the one we're talking about. So what I want you to think about is you could be talking to ChatGPT as you work, but then you could be using a separate tab specifically for doing other tasks. So you can have both the voice interaction and the text interaction in two separate chat windows simultaneously. Now when GPT-40 gets rolled out to the ChatGPT desktop application, the latency of voice is going to be reduced significantly. So when that model comes out, you might find that it's even faster to talk to ChatGPT via voice chats. A final feature that I want to talk to you about in ChatGPT is ChatGPT's ability to easily take screenshots. You can do this on Macintosh by holding the Alt or Option in space, and then this will load a window that you can see here in the middle of the screen. When you have this window open, you can easily send messages to ChatGPT, but one of the killer features that I found to be useful is clicking on this attachment icon and clicking take screenshot or take photo. Let's now upload a screenshot of my Spotify application, take a screenshot and tell to ChatGPT what is the song that I am currently 
listening to. What we can do here is we can specifically upload attachments based on our screenshot and we can send vision directly to Spotify and just to show you what I was listening to, I was listening to Holy Diver, Kill Switch, Engage and you can see that ChatGPT was able to easily take a bit of a screenshot of one of my applications which is my Spotify playlist and then what it allows it to do is then we can then ask it questions about that. So a really great killer feature, you just hit that option space or alt space and then you go to the uh, attachment icon and then you can take a screenshot of any of your applications or your entire screen on the specific uh, application that you'd like to ask questions about. That screenshot will then allow ChatGPT's vision model to answer questions about that image. Cool, so hopefully you learned a lot about how you can use the ChatGPT desktop application.